Hang in there. All right, listen up. Okay, so now we're talking about rotation and all of the angular stuff is now, uh, no, 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 sorry. All the linear stuff is still, now we're thinking about them as angular velocities, angular accelerations, you know, angular displacements. Um, I should have printed out this uh, test. Oh, and I still didn't. Uh, anyway, test three formula sheet will have all of the uh, all of the linear integrals and derivatives, but we'll all, it will also have all of the angular um, integrals and derivatives. So they're on your formula sheet. Uh, so this is not not completely new. All right. So let's let's look at problems like uh, this one right here. All right. So we've got this gear or wheel or whatever disc. Uh, do you see that it's pinned about its center? So this is pure rotation about the center. It's important to know where the center of rotation is because all of those R's many times we're going to use um, that is the distance from the center of rotation. All right, so this gear rotates 20 revolutions. It achieves a final angular velocity of 30 radians per second starting from rest. Determine its constant angular acceleration and the time required. So. Did you see that constant angular acceleration? So we can use those constant angular acceleration equations. We have three of them. And so now we just have to decide what are we, which one should we use? Um, and I wish I, we can go back a, a page uh, right here. Here they are. Which ones uh, can I use? I think it said starting from rest, right? Starting from rest, so the omega initial is zero. Um, it, it, it achieves a final angular velocity of 30, so omega final equals 30. Um, and then did it, did it give me the time? No. Uh, but it told, me, it told me that it rotates 20 revolutions, right? It told me that it rotates 20 revolutions. What, where, where do I put that information in my uh, constant angular acceleration equation? That, that would be that right there. That would be the theta final minus theta initial. That would be the 20 revolutions. But I, I've got to use radians, all right? For this equation, for all these equations, all these integrals, I need to choose radians, okay? So first of all, let me just, uh, let me go to this problem and let me change 20 revolutions to radians. Y'all can do that, right? 20 revolutions this is how i do it i want to convert revolutions to radians i know that one revolution is two pi radians so we could say 40 pi uh and that's probably what you should do uh but i i, I just i just put it in my calculator um and i would say 125.66 you know give me give me some decimal places some um significant digits radians okay so it started from rest. It achieves a final angular velocity of 30. Um, after it goes, a theta of 125.66 radians. Find the acceleration and find the time required. So maybe a little bit of trial and error or just really look at those three equations. How about this one? Omega final squared equals omega initial squared plus 2 alpha. And I'm just going to put theta, but that's kind of a delta theta. That's a theta final minus theta initial. Theta final minus theta initial, which is that 125. You know, you can just assume it starts at a zero unless it specifies otherwise. It starts at a zero, it ends at a 125.66. All right. So omega final squared, the 30 radians per second squared equals it started from rest let's look and see if the units work out equals two uh, alpha is what we're looking for theta 125.66 radians <laughs> so in order for all these units to work out that alpha should be in radians per second squared so yeah units do work out uh, let's talk about positives and negatives though for a minute let's talk about positives and negatives you can choose clockwise or counterclockwise to be positive. All right, so you can choose what direction you want to be positive for now. Um, but you've got to be consistent. 
your velocity, your acceleration, your theta, they've got to be consistent. So if you choose, um, I think I'm going to choose counterclockwise. And this would be a, a positive um, angular velocity. Is this positive? It didn't really tell me. It didn't really tell me if it was clockwise 20 revolutions or counterclockwise 20 revolutions, but I think you can see from the figure if this, if this uh, omega is counter, if it starts from rest and then it's going that way, then this is also counterclockwise positive. Uh, so, so many times everything's in the same direction and you don't have to worry too much about positives and negatives, but sometimes you'll have something that's, you know, going counterclockwise, but it is, it's acceleration or it's, it's slowing down, you know, it's acceleration is in the other direction. Be careful when you got things that are uh, in both directions. But anyway, I'm going to say positive is counterclockwise. That's my only unknown. I've got an alpha 3.58 radians per second. 3.58 radians per second. That was one part of it. This equation didn't have time, and I want to solve for time, so I need to just use another equation. I can use the constant acceleration equation. I could probably use either of uh, those other two equations. I think I could use either of those other two equations. How about this one? Theta final equals theta initial plus omega initial t, one half, oops, one half alpha t squared. So again, e either, uh, you know, assume that you start at a theta of zero or just, just bring it to the left-hand side and call that delta theta. My delta theta is 125.66 radians. Start with initial velocity of zero. Uh, one half alpha t squared. Get a t of 8.38 seconds. We could have used uh, omega final because omega initial plus alpha t. We would have gotten the same answer. Would have gotten the same time, 8.38 seconds. All right.